How long ago was going on that? It's three? almost a month ago. Almost a month ago. Look at her. What God's done. Yeah. Prayer. Yeah. But you know, I, I tell you, I can feel the results of this church praying too. And Daniel, I can feel, feel the results of you praying and people texting us and saying they're praying. And the church over, our home folks over there in Anderson and, and other churches was praying. I want to talk to you on grace for a few moments. Sweet grace. Amen. I want you to look with me in Genesis chapter 6, verse uh, number 8. I'm going to use that one text this morning. But, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Look with me. Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. Uh, talk to you just a few moments on sweet grace. I'm glad that grace is sweet. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 I'm glad I'm brought by grace. Amen. I can't work my way into heaven. I can't earn my way into heaven. I can't join churches and do good works to, uh, to get to heaven. And I can't shake the preacher's hand. And what does it mean, uh, Brother Goss, that, uh, uh, that you're talking about? You must be born again. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Jesus told Nicodemus in the third chapter of John, he said, you, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you must be born again. Amen. I'm glad today that it's by grace through faith that according to Ephesians chapter 8, uh, I mean chapter 2, verse 8, that we're saved by grace through faith. The Bible says the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. If you look in St. John chapter 1, verse 17, the Bible says, For the law was given by Moses, and grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to know that God gave Noah a divine plan. Amen. I want you to understand God's given you and I a divine plan. Yes. He gave his only son. His only son to die on the cross. Oh, yeah. To go to Calvary for you and I. That we might have an ark of safety. That we might have a place that we can run to. That we can, might have that we have a place to, that we can run into. I'm glad today that we can enter into the ark. And that we can be safe. And I'll tell you why the floods are going to be upon this world. You and I are going to be in the ark of safety. Why? Because we have accepted Jesus Christ. Oh, as Lord and Savior yes. of our lives. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm glad that I have tasted of sweet grace. I'm glad this morning that grace has been so sweet to my soul. I'm glad that no one of the psalmist wrote these words. He said, taste and see that the Lord is good. I want you to know this morning that the Lord is good. God gave Noah a divine plan. He said, Noah, I'm going to destroy the world by water. I'm going to send destruction upon the world. I'm going to judge the sins of humanity. I'll tell you that God Almighty is going to judge the sins of humanity. God Almighty is going to judge the sinfulness of this world today. But I want to tell you all that is in Jesus Christ that has been washed by the blood. I'll tell you this morning that has their name written in the book of Lamb's Book of Life. All the rejoice this yes, morning. Yes, hallelujah. And lift up their hands. And praise give your God name, the praise Jesus. That their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Somebody shout amen this amen. morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Glad I'm saved by yes, the blood Jesus. Of the Lamb. Say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. My Lord, this morning I thank God that Noah got out there and he began to follow the plan of God. He began to build the ark. And while they was building the ark, no doubt they were making fun of him. No doubt his generation was laughing at him. No doubt they were saying, uh, this old man has gone crazy. This old man has lost his mind. But God had given him a divine plan. God had given him a, 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 a divine call. God had given him divine instructions. I want to tell you, we got a divine plan, we got a divine call, and God's given us divine instruction, instructions. And that instruction is to receive Jesus Christ. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How many of you know that you have cried out unto God and you've asked Christ into your life and that you know that your sins are are not in the blood of the Lamb and that you've been washed by the blood. Somebody say amen. Amen. For the blood. Amen. Amen. Good preaching. I like it. 
Noah's out there. He's building that ark. The scoffers are, cut, are, are laughing. And let me tell you what Peter said. Peter said that in the last days, there would come scoffers walking after their own lust. We're living in a time when they're saying they're not going to be a rapture. We're living in a time when they say that Christ will never come back to this earth. We're living in a time wherein the nation is rising against nations and wars and rumors of wars and famines and earthquakes and hurricanes. But I want to tell you what, the only real sure peace is in Jesus Christ. I, I say this morning and the third of you this morning name, from Jesus. this church pulpit, the only real true peace that I have this morning is in dream, Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ himself. I'm glad this morning that when I got saved, I found peace. I got washed by the blood of the Lamb and I got peace in God. Somebody that's got peace, say amen. And Hallelujah. And give God the praise in the house of the Lord. You got peace in your soul. Say amen. Amen. Praise God. A divine plan, a divine call, divine instructions. He's out there nailing and well, they didn't use nails, they used glue. Or a pitch. That's what the Bible called a pitch. And he used a type of wood that would float. Amen. Go for wood. And it was so prepared by God. I want to tell you something this morning. I like what the old gospel writer with Bill Gates says. What's his name? Uh, Mark Lowry, isn't it? That? Isn't that his name? He sang with the gospel uh, group, the Bill Gates. He said... He said it was a professional that built the Titanic, but it was amateurs that built the ark. I want to tell you which one you think floated. I tell you this morning, God Almighty says build something. God Almighty pushes it together. It's going to work. It's going to work. Somebody say amen. Yes. God Almighty is your source in your life. And God Almighty is with you this morning. And he's got his hand on your life. Somebody say, I thank God for his hand upon my life this morning. I thank God that he is with me. And that God is keeping me. And that he's keeping me strong in faith by the sweet grace of God. By the grace of God. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Grace not only saves us, grace keeps us. Amen. Grace not only keeps us, grace teaches us. Amen. Oh, oh no, no doubt while they were laughing and scoffing, he told his sons, Ham, Sham, and Japheth, Boys, you just get the ark ready. You just do what the Lord said to do. And every day they was out there prepared. Every day they was out there laboring by faith. You know, sometimes it's hard to labor by faith. Sometimes we don't know where it's coming from. We don't see how it's going to come in. But God will open up another window from heaven. And he'll provide and meet the need. Somebody say yes, amen. amen. And it'll come in and God will do a work. Amen. Amen. How many times has he been with you, Brother Daniel? And you know that God has been right there with you. And he come through. And if you walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible teaches us that we do walk by faith and not by sight. It, it wouldn't be faith if we could see everything that God was doing. God said, just trust me, child. Just trust me. I'm with you. Can you say I'm trusting the Lord this morning? I've got my faith in him. Whole Lord was preparing the ark. No doubt he was moving by knowing that God was going to fulfill what he said he would do. And he's out there, there laughing and they're scoffing. This is a scoffing generation towards Jesus Christ. That's right. That's true. That's right. If this generation ever needed Jesus, they need him now. They need to be born again. You need to ask Christ in your life. Confess your sins. Turn from your sins. And ask Christ into your life today. You did it by Facebook. Whether you're in a foreign country. You're on foreign shores. Jesus will save you. If you'll ask him into your heart. Bow your head and ask Christ into your heart. Trust him today. How many of you can say this morning that you're glad that day that you got saved? 
Amen. And that you got that yes. in your life. Come on with me. Amen. Amen. Yes. How many of you be glad that you can sit on these pews this morning and say that you're glad that the day that you know that the Lord washed you from your sins and put your name in the Lamb's Book of Life? Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sweet grace. Old Paul and I preached a few Sundays ago. Old Paul got off the crooked road onto the straight road. You remember how I told you that God told Ananias to go down to the, the, to the street that was called straight? God had got him, Paul, off the crooked road and got him on the straight road. And some people would get off the crooked road and get on the straight road and begin to walk with Jesus Christ. Amen. You can't live and do just any way you want to. you got to live for God. you got to turn your life over to Him live every day. And I'll tell you one thing. He'll put you on a straight road. You'll have peace with God. You'll have you'll fall in love with your fellow man. You'll fall in love with, your, listen, with God and you'll find peace and you'll rest easy at night. When you're born again and you're washed in the blood of the Lamb and you know you've been justified by faith through the blood, the Bible said there Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God our Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Paul in Romans 5, 1, therefore being justified. Yes. You see, what the law couldn't do, grace has done. Yes, amen. The law could only tell me I was a sinner. That's right. The law can only be a schoolmaster to show my shortcomings. That's right. Your shortcomings. The law said, don't do this, and don't do that, and don't do this. If I'm out there breaking the law, and I run run 80 mile an hour down the aisle down there, and the highway patrol pulled, I watched him pull somebody over this morning. It was, I passed him, and I was running the speed limit, and I, and I, somebody coming behind me was running, must have been running 80 mile an hour. And all of a sudden, he just flipped it. I looked at my rear view mirror, he flipped the blue light on. I said, uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. That's what you down there. Uh -huh. I want to tell you no matter what, the law is the law. The law says 60 mile an hour, the law says 70 mile an hour. I can't stand before, before that judge and say, well, I was ignorant of the law. I didn't know this and I didn't know that. If you look at the Ten Commandments, the law says, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not bear false witness against your brothers and sisters of the Lord. Right. Oh. Yeah. I'm preaching it this morning. Somebody say amen. 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 You don't bear false witness. Hmm? Right. You to love the Lord your God with all your heart. And you get to, listen, in all that, the, hey, listen, in all that, the Bible says that we can't keep the law. There's no way we can keep the law. So Jesus Christ came into the world, and he went to Calvary's cross, and he died on Calvary's cross, that whosoever will can come and receive his blood and receive the redemptive plan of God Almighty. And I'll tell you, whoever received the blood, received the redemptive plan, and asks Christ into their hearts, uh, uh, ask Christ into their heart. I want to tell you this morning, they're justified before God uh, as though they never sinned. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, we're just justified before God because He has washed us in His blood. Uh, he has washed us from our sins. Uh, I'll tell you this morning, we've been saved this morning by the blood. Somebody lift your hands and give God the glory in the house of the Lord. Thank the you, blood, Jesus. The blood of the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you. Sounds good. Naomi came back from over from the land of Edom. I mean, uh, when she journeyed from the land of a uh, famine. Uh, back to Bethlehem, which means a house of bread. Moab, wasn't it? Moab, yeah. Yep, thank you. From the land of Moab, she lost her husbands and her son. And she came back, and she needed a kinsman redeemer. Amen. She needed a kinsman redeemer. Oh, let me tell you this morning, I could preach all day long on that kinsman redeemer. A kinsman redeemer, he had to have the ability to redeem. I want to tell you, Jesus had the ability to redeem. He came into this world. He was all wise. 
He was all knowing. Let me tell you something. He was headed to the cross. Jesus Christ was headed to the cross for you and I. And Paul uses that word. He said, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let me tell you, and when she came, uh, when she came back from uh, Moab uh, and, and they came one up to her, uh, when, uh, when she sent in the Naomi into the fields to work, y'all know what happened. That, that Boaz got out of that night and he got his eye on that little Gentile bride. Y'all want me to preach on this thing this morning? Oh, I'm glad I'm in a Gentile bride. Yes. Oh, God didn't leave us out. Somebody said amen. Come on with me. Amen. Grace, grace. I'm still on my subject. Grace, grace. How sweet it is. Somebody say I'm glad I'm saved by grace. Yes, hallelujah. I'm not saved by works. I'm saved by grace. I'm saved by grace in the blood of the Lamb. I'm saved knowing that I'm, uh, my name is in the Lamb book of life. Uh, there's no good works that can do it except the blood of the Lamb. I've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Somebody that's been washed by the blood of the Lamb, give God praise this morning in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Naomi's out in the field working. And Boaz Ruth. Ruth, I mean, excuse me. Ruth is out in the field working. Naomi knows that she's gone down in the field of Boaz to work. And Boaz gets his eye on her. And he has his eye on that little Gentile bride. She wouldn't have nothing to do with no other men in that feel up right. with just Boaz. And Naomi told her, Ruth, how to go about getting the kids of a redeemer in that. She said, when he goes in of the barn of a night, the, 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 the wind, the, the wheat are due. Throw the wheat up and what they do, they do it of a night because the wind would get into it and they would Separate, separate the the the, uh, the unpure the chaff yeah the chaff from the wheat that's what I'm trying to say and he went into that barn and he lay down and sleep and there was nothing unclean about this she went in and laid at his feet and she said to him when he woke up he said who is this she said Ruth spread your garment on me I'm glad that grace has given me a new name written down in glory. I'm glad this morning that there is a new name. If there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. It's in the last book of life. I'm glad this morning that grace has brought me further, amen, than I could ever imagine. Grace, grace, grace. Spread your garment over me. You know how she... He told us the men to let handfuls on purpose. There's a sermon that yeah. grace. God gives us handfuls on purpose. You know what? I'm going to say this this morning. Sweet grace would, would have saved those people from that generation of wrath if they'd have listened to no one. I want to close by seeing this this morning. You listen closely. A divine plan of the divine call and divine instructions. That generation, no doubt, must have seen the animals start up now, right? As God spoke to them. They no doubt seen the signs and yet they still stopped. Yes. It don't take a Professor or theologian to know that Jesus Christ is about to come back to this earth. Oh, yes, right. He's coming back. And I want a taste of that handful on purpose. Boaz said, Let it fall, handfuls on purpose. To come. <laughs> now he went through the kinsman redeemer law, he followed the law to the teeth. And he redeemed her. And out of her 
marriage. Him marrying her came the beautiful relationship of the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, God hasn't left the Gentile bride out. When the two spies went in the spy out the land, who did they spare? They spared Rahab. Yes. God has not left us out. He said, I'm going to bring them in by my grace. By Thank you, Jesus. My grace. Thank you, Lord blood Jesus. Of the Lamb. On Calvary's Hill, I'm going to close by this, and you listen to me. When he looked to his father and he said, Father, in the thy hands, I commend my spirit. And he said these words, it is finished. Yes. Amen. Yes, the plan of salvation. I can't add to. I can't do anything to improve on that. I can't join every church there is in Greenville. The redemptive work is done. It is finished. Oh, yeah. And I can say to you this morning, and you listen to love honey folks go to the piano, how sweet it is oh, yeah. to taste of grace. Oh, yeah. Can y'all say amen to that? Can I make this one point before I close the message? How do you think Noah's three boys felt? And Noah's sons felt when they were in the ark. And they're riding in the ark. And they said everything that he preached was true. Right. And the ones that did not know God outside crying, open unto us the door. Open on us the door, no one. Let us in. I told you it was coming, but God shut the door. There will come a time that men will no longer laugh and scoff in the face of Almighty God. You better get your children in. You better get your nephews in. You better get your aunts and uncles in. You better get every loved one in that you can get in because the door is coming to a close. Yes, it is. Listen to me. The door of opportunity. You want a good point to a message, mark that down. The door of opportunity. Amen. My brother, would you lead us in this prayer this morning? It's honor to have you, my brother. God bless you. Come back and speak for us one morning. Please close the prayer. Our Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this powerful message today. Message direct from God to our heart. I pray, God, that you bless this pastor and everyone that comes to this church. Bless them. Lay your hands upon them, God. And I believe I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you, dear Father God, for this food for my soul today from the Word of God. Anybody need prayer before we go? We've got people sticking their bodies in this church. Brother Hawkins, remember him in prayer? Remember Brother Ben's brother? That God would touch him? Remember Carolyn's husband? That God would continue to touch him? That God would move and touch each one of our members? That's, listen, that supports this church. They need, listen, they physically need a touch from God. We ask God to bless you. Let's stand together. I'm glad I'm saved this morning. I'm glad I'm saved. Somebody say, I'm glad I'm saved by grace. Come on. Saved by grace. Say amen. Amen. Saved by grace. Oh.